fighters. I just want to say a few thank yous as part of the protocol of uh, our event tonight here in Berlin, the O2 World. First, I'd like <coughs> to thank our sponsors, EA Sports, the game UFC launches on Ju in June. Uh, the, I'd also like to thank Unibet and, of course, our partners here in O2, uh, the O2 World Arena. Great arena, great night, uh, and the fans have gone home happy. So, <coughs> I'd also like to say that we had through the door, sitting in seats, uh, over 8,000 people watching the fights. Uh, tonight's event was available in over 325 million households around the world. So people watched the great action from everywhere, all corners. Over 170 million households just here in Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, I'd like to also say that uh, we broadcast it live on two army bases here in Germany. Uh, we're just getting twi uh, Twitter messages from, uh, from those guys who had a great night, so again, thank you to, to everybody. Uh, changed it up a little bit, there were so many great fights tonight. Uh, we're going to commend uh, four fighters for four great performances, rather than have a uh, fight of the night. Uh, first up, uh, £50,000 better off, Magnus Seddenblad. Also going to bed happy, Nicholas Backstrom. <laughs> Told you he was going to bed happy. Uh, C.B. Dolloway, what a great yeah. fight that was. And finally, uh, Gegard Mousasi. Uh, it doesn't take away from every one of the fighters who put on great performances tonight. I think you must admit, you have to admit, that when anybody ever says anything about our card, anything about the performances, every one of these fighters was committed, gave the fans every piece of value tonight. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of Dana, uh, who's caught it, uh, catching the plane home very quickly. Thank you very much to the fighters. I'm going to open it up to questions right away so we can get going. What are you thinking of doing? Jager? Start with you. You spoke to me during the week. You said you were very nervous going into this fight, and you felt motivated. And um, how do you assess your performance after that fight? Well, I came from a loss, so you have always pressure. You don't want to lose twice in a row in uh, UFC, so <laughs> every fight is important. Um, I would give it eight. I would say. Um, yeah. And Mark. To you, it's that's two pretty hard losses in your, your last two fights. Um, you know what's next for you? Uh, you know, you just gotta pick up the pieces and just keep going. You know, uh, you know it's, uh, it's it was a tough loss, but uh, you know I I think it doesn't matter how many times you fall, but it's how many times you pick yourself back up there after a loss or failure. So yeah, well uh, said. That's what I'll do. Gary, just uh, one final question. Obviously, the Dublin card coming up uh, quite soon. Um, is there any other Irish fighters that you might be looking at signing and to put on the card? Signing and putting on the card. I, I mean, I, you know, I think it's, it's, we're public right now with, with the card that we have. Uh, we're always looking for great fighters to put on all cards, doesn't matter where, which country. But uh, uh, I think we're all we're all pretty uh, pretty excited about that that event itself. So more to come on that one. Uh, for Nicholas Baxter, just go through your feelings when you heard that 50k is coming your way. Oh yeah, it's really nice. I'm just sitting counting like taxes. And <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much I'm gonna get out of it, but it's, I bet it's a lot. So it's, a, it's like 10 times. Um, uh, it's like 100 times more money than I ever had. So yeah. Question here. Um, to Nick and also to Peter, can you just uh, sum up your feelings 
uh, in regards to um, fighting for the UFC the first time in Berlin and how much this means to both of you. Sorry for Peter, not for the first time for you, but returning after a, a quite a while. You want to go ahead? Go first. Okay. So, um, as I said many times before, this is the mountaintop of sports events I've ever been to. You know, I was in the judo national team and I was really trying, uh, I was close <coughs> competing in the Olympics, but this is so much over the top, you know, and I'm so happy. I think we did a, we did a great step uh, to the future of MMA and especially, <coughs> sorry, the UFC in Germany and, um, you know, I think uh, Peter will agree our wins were just like the, the topping on the ice cream uh, that we had today. So I'm totally overrun by positive feelings and I think, um, yeah, I want to I want you to give the chance to say how you feel. Yeah, I've been waiting for my first uh, win in the UFC for more than five years on my first run. I lost three times in a row. I had to go back to the local circuit, but I made it back tonight. Uh, I had my first UFC victory. It's an awesome feeling. Uh, plus, uh, fighting in Germany, in my home country, with a lot of fans and a lot of support. And I think it was a great step toward a great future in uh, MMA in Germany. And just a question for Gary here. Um, when we obviously spoke a few months ago at the uh, press conference, um, right up until now, now that the event's over, can you just sum up in, uh, in, your, in your own words um, how the German media has taken to the UFC and how things have changed? Well, you know, I'm always going to have a, a biased view. Uh, I think there's many, many others who could give you a, an equally subjective view, but I think we've worked hard here for four years. Uh, everybody knows that we've had our challenges in Germany and we have to be respectful of the authorities. Uh, but it's, it's time for people to realize this is an elite performance sport. These are elite athletes that are admired the world round, all, all around the world by every athlete. And I think that we've seen with uh, built uh, newspaper coverage here in Germany, uh, we've had four television networks in the audience tonight who have shook hands, left the building saying what a great night, didn't have no imagination that it was going to be that good. Uh, and I think I'd e like to echo Peter's words, which I think the, uh, the future is very bright for us here in Germany, as it is for all MMA. Question for CB. Um, how would you rate your performance tonight? And you seem to be struggling a bit. Can you just sum up what injuries that you may have? Um, it <clears throat> wasn't the performance I wanted, you know, I wanted the finish, uh, but sometimes you don't get what you want. Uh, it was a tough fight, and right now, you know, my elbow, my leg, I got stitches in both eyes. It was a tough fight, and, you know, gave the fans what they wanted, hopefully. And how hard were the kicks from Francis, and uh, what was with the taunting of each other? Uh, the, the kicks from Francis were, uh, I mean, if you can see my body, you know, my leg is pretty tore up, my elbows tore up, but taunting was for the fans, you know, people like to see that, make it exciting, you know, that's why we do this, is to put on a show and make it entertaining, so, you know, hopefully you were entertained. And just to sum up, um, would you say now that you're a top 10 UFC fighter? Uh, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys, up to the media, you know, you guys make the rankings, but uh, I feel I'm in the top 10 and uh, I'm a, now a contender in the middleweight division. Question uh, for Gegard. Yes. Uh, uh, you got your uh, very impressive win over a top 10 guy. Where do you see yourself in the middleweight division? Well, I think just beneath five, around f seven to five, maybe. Question for uh, Gigab as well, over here. Hi. Yep. Uh, after a fight, you said that you were interested in uh, about of either Michael, uh, sorry, with Luke Rockhold or Tim Kennedy. What is it about those two fighters that interest you? No, I'm not interested in uh, <coughs> them at all, but uh, I think uh, coming from a win, I'm going to get a winner. So it's going to be Kennedy, Luke Rockhold, or uh, anyone who's coming off a win and is maybe a contender. So. That's why I think I will get one of those guys, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not challenging anyone. And a question for Niklas as well. Now that you know that you're going to get that bonus over here, uh, what do you plan on spending that bonus money on? Uh, I haven't thought so far. 
Uh, I know I owe my girlfriend for rent uh, this month. So <laughs> <it's back. laughs> yeah, after that, uh, I, I do some something cool. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Question for Gary. Gary, how can we expect to see the EMEA schedule develop over the next 12 months? Because at the minute it's six shows this year. We expect it to go up maybe next year with the response that it's getting so far. And just to follow on to that, you said certain shows are going to be held on certain dates, like London in February. So for places like Berlin, Dublin, Stockholm, is it going to be rotationary maybe every 18 months? Because since you only have six events per year at the minute, it'll be hard to keep going back to the six places each year and ignore other areas? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the plan is, is, hasn't really changed. Uh, when you come to Berlin and you put on such a good show and everybody gets excited and, and, and really, you, you know, you leave the town thinking we want more, then uh, we've already started negotiations for uh, the 23rd of May uh, 2015 back in Berlin. So. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense for us because everybody's accepted us, we, 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 we like being here, the fans love it, uh, and we're gonna, that's on the plan. Uh, we know what Dublin looks like for, for this year, July the 19th, and if it works, which we hope it will, then there's a plan to come back to Dublin. Now what we've had, uh, this is no secret, because you all keep asking, when are you coming to Helsinki, when are you coming to Warsaw, when are you coming to, and we just, you know, we're, we're limited by how much we can put out there, so uh, the, the I like to have a, a very clear base so that we can keep going back to the same places year after year and we can build on that and the fans expect it. So Dana mentioned the other day that Fox Sports 1 are interested in the Dublin card. Do you, what's your opinion on that? Do you think it undermines the EMEA deal or it's good that the big networks are taking such an interest in these perceived lower cards? Well, no, you've got to give, you've got to give credit to my team in Europe. Uh, our team in Europe said, you know, enough of this Fox driving everything that we do in Europe. Let's go and do it ourselves. Guess what? Fox saw what we were doing and now they want a piece of the action. So, good. Well done, Europe. Uh, so we've all achieved what we set out to do. I, if, if Fox uh, in America want to broadcast our fights, and if you, there isn't anybody who's a UFC fan that wouldn't want to see that tonight. So if they want to buy it, great. Bring it on. And finally, Dana sometimes will jokingly make reactionary comments. I asked the other day about three fights being added to the Dublin card. To, boost it up to, say, the level of a Fox Sports 1 card. Yeah. Was that a throwaway comment, or can you confirm that more fights will actually be added for July? No. I, I'm not going to comment on that, because it's Dana's comment, but, um, you know, you're always, I, I always like the way that you try and get more out of Dana, and, and everybody tries to get a lot out of Dana, and uh, we're busy now trying to find three more fights, but it might not be three, it might be one, it might be two, but uh, thanks for instigating that comment, and thanks for creating a lot more work for us in the mayor office. <laughs> Okay, um, a question to Nick and uh, Peter. Um, what um, is actually your feelings now after you, you won the fight um, towards the um, critics of the UFC here in Germany? What do you want to say to them? Um, I just want to say to all the critics, I have no problems if you have, have a problem with MMA, but uh, please take your time and get informed about our sport because there is one thing I don't like. It's uh, people who don't... Uh, know nothing about MMA and uh, saying bad stuff about us and um, I think in my opinion that's the biggest problem. Do your homework. <laughs> yes, yeah, so do your homework. The, uh, the journalists and reporters ha have to do their homework and, uh, and uh, get to get educated about our sport and if they have a bad opinion after that, okay, I'm cool with that, but um, I got the feeling that a lot of journalists haven't seen one fight in their life and um, of course that's bad. But nevertheless I would like to add that um, my experience this, this these weeks was like um, the media quite changed you know they were quite positive and you know the questions I got asked were usually really fair so I think um, you know it's like we say in German geben und nehmen giving and receiving you know um, we should also like be grateful to the media this time because they were really fair you know they were objective they gave us a good chance to present the sport how it is and um, yeah so 
I also want to thank to uh, say thanks to the media and uh, the critics weren't really that mean this time. And a question to Gary. Um, and uh, what's the progress now uh, with the um, uh, broadcasting it now in, in German TV? Well, as I said, we've, we've had uh, four major broadcasters in this country have attended the event tonight at the highest level. Uh, they're very impressed, very pleased, and uh, we'll, we'll be, uh, you'll be seeing some stuff come from, from that area in the next 30 days. And what are you going to do about uh, your fighters uh, paying their rent? <laughs> Hey, we we can only give we can only reward them for their performance. What they whether they pay their rent or whether they don't, that's not my problem. <laughs> my pro my issue is we have to just pay them for for putting on a great show. And I think the four guys that were rewarded tonight did exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, question for Sean. Over here. On to your left. Oh, I see you, man. I got no, you. I'm over here. Wait, 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 there we go. There we go. <laughs> there I am. Um, when did you break your, your finger and does it make the win that much more satisfying that you were able to pull it off with a broken finger? Uh, you know, it, it kind of sucked because uh, I broke it in the beginning of the third round and my mindset, I was, I was kind of irritated in my first, two, my first two rounds. I came in there, I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get his face, I'm going to pressure him, I'm going to hit him. And then he threw, a, he threw a right hand and it hit my finger and I heard a crunch. And I was like, why can't I close my hand? And I kind of messed with my finger. And I was like, oh, it's dislocated. It kind of clicked in my brain. So um, it, it kind of threw me off a little bit. You know, it sucks when you're in a fight and you, you, gotta, and you know that you just took away one of your biggest weapons, your right hand. So mentally, mentally it, kind of, it kind of threw me off. But, I mean, I just knew if I could just kept sticking and moving, I went on points. It, uh, I was a little, a little disappointed that I didn't get more of an exciting show. But... I mean, I'm young in the UFC. This is my second fight, so I mean, I'm hoping that you know I can put this behind me, move on, and get more exciting fights in the UFC for you guys. Um, question for Nick. <clears throat> Most people know by now that you have a regular job as a as a policeman, so obviously your schedule is very tight. Um, now I'm wondering uh, when we can see you back in the octagon. I mean, uh, since you're coming from a judo background and you're married to a Japanese wife, it would make absolute sense to put you on the Japan card in September, and uh, I'm asking uh, if you would be ready for, for that. I wouldn't mind, but it's not in uh, it's not in uh, in my hands. But you know, when the company calls me, I would definitely um, yeah, I would definitely go and uh, enjoy my my time over there because you know, Japan is a like the crowd is also really um, grateful. They are. They, uh, they love MMA there, it already arrived years ago, and uh, yeah, I think this would also be a great opportunity to show great MMA fights. Thanks. Uh, just a follow-up question. We just talked about the rough times that uh, the UFC and MMA sport in general had in Germany, and now the, the media has opened up, you know, prior to yes. this event uh, a little bit, but after your fights at the scrums, I uh, again heard a couple of really strange questions from uh, yeah, a couple of media guys. So uh, what do you think, uh, how, how long is the way uh, that the UFC still has to go over here in Germany? With guys like you now, like on the I think, I think we, we already came quite far, but you know, there's still, um, still a way, of course. And, but I wouldn't really mind answering those questions either, because these questions are always going to come. And I think it's our job to answer those questions and uh, be patient and uh, show everyone how great the sport is and that it's a sport and not, you know, I know what ex exactly what you mean, so um, yes, we have to be patient and it's going to work out anyway, I'm pretty sure. I was wondering when the production team realized it had the wrong canvas. Uh, no, we realized we had the wrong canvas when we put it down. Uh, the canvas that was supposed to be here was uh, is somewhere else at the moment, so we had to go to plan B. Fortunately, we are well equipped to have a plan B, and so that was a, a, a standard canvas that uh, didn't meet the sponsor's needs, but it met our needs and it met the fighter's needs. Are there any concessions that you're making to sponsors as, as a result of that, or just chalk it up to, to bad luck? Or? No, we, we informed them uh, in, ahead of time. They knew what was coming, and uh, it's, it's just part of doing business. It's when you run in this operation, as you well know, this is uh, it's not easy, and uh, it's, it's just one of those things that happens. <coughs> And a question for CB. Did you have any interaction with Dana after the fight? Uh, not yet. I think he had to catch a plane and get out of here. Um, 
Did you hear about the tweet that he posted after after your fight? No, I haven't uh, been on my Twitter or anything yet. My phone <laughs> doesn't really work here. I want. I just wanted to uh, read this to you. It said, "CB is awesome on the mic. Dynamic, all the caps." Um, do you think that you still have some convincing to do in terms of like convincing, you know, Dana and the UFC that you know you're a top ten guy, you're worth those marquee fights, or do you think that this was this was a one? <clears throat> Yeah, I probably got to get better on the mic, but when you're exhausted after a fight, you know, I let it all hang out, gave everything I had, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was tired, you know, after the fight. Uh, it was a tough fight, uh, bleeding out of both eyes. Like, sorry I couldn't put on a better performance on the mic, you know. I, I try to let my fighting do the talking, but uh, next time I'll have something better to say, I guess. I don't know. Sorry. Thanks. Question for Nicholas. Over here, um, how do you feel about your opponent Tom Ninimaki and his, his uh, performance tonight? Yeah, no, I uh, always uh, thought uh, Ninimaki was a really, really good fighter, and uh, I said in a bunch of interviews, you know, uh, it's too bad he has to fight me now, uh, so he goes back. But I think he has huge potentials to be a top ten uh, fighter in this weight class, no doubt. Uh, just you know. Yeah, he had to fight me. Niklas, you said something about an injury, a broken toe maybe. What did the doctor say about that? No, I don't know. It's just the way it goes off to the left. I don't know. It, uh, he just uh, uh, taped them together and said we should, uh, should uh, x-ray them when we get back to Sweden. So. Yeah, I'm not too bothered about it. I got, I got money now. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Nicholas. Uh, what was your game plan coming in this to this fight? Uh, no, I I never have a, a game plan really, but uh, I like to do a, a stand up. Uh, I won the Swedish championship on the ground too in submission wrestling. So I'm like secure everywhere, but uh, yeah, I like to uh, strike standing, and I think I I got like more into my to my reach and my knockout power lately. Uh, <laughs> you get it, bro. Don't worry. I'm so, I'm so sorry, uh, but yeah, uh, I didn't have a game plan. Uh, it was just yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, with this win, where do you think this puts you in the division? And do you have your mindset for a future opponent? Or do you take just whatever they give you? No, I take uh, whatever they give me. Uh, of course, my, my future uh, like mindset for uh, is Jose Aldo. I want to be the best in the world, of course. Uh, yeah, as I say, say all the time, I don't think you should go into MMA if you want to be like top 10. Or if you just want to get into the UFC and say hi and then go out, because then you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. You're known for being a gamer. Did you get a chance to play the new UFC game? No, I didn't. But now I'm buying the. Yeah, you're buying. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Rematch. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Um, Dana told us yesterday that you've had meetings this week to discuss the uh, ultimate fight to Europe. Uh, he mentioned that it would involve uh, quite a few countries, uh, England, Germany, Sweden. Can you provide us with any more information? Would it be a tough that would launch this year or maybe 2015? It, well, it won't air on television until 2015, but the discussions are still going on, so I can't really tell you much more than, uh, you know, I don't think it's just going to be a one, it's not going to be one ultimate fight or one reality package. It's going to be a number of those. We, did, we need to do them in the major countries and we need to keep it going. It's nobody just turning up and having one event in a market. You've got to keep producing content for television to uh, to the guys from Germany, their point, you've got to keep educating the audiences. A lot of people still need to be made aware of what how great this sport is and how great these athletes are, and that's one way to tell that story. So it's it's picking those markets and just keep repeating that. So uh, we've got some plans that uh, we'll start to reveal over the next 90 days. And you mentioned earlier, obviously, you've got your, your six events this year. Uh, you're looking to expand uh, next year. Are there any countries or any markets that are, are a dead cert that you will be visiting in 2015? 
Yeah, I think we've already announced that we'll be in London. Uh, we're looking at us outside of the six. Outside of the six, yeah. uh, there's nothing that I can announce right now because we haven't confirmed the arenas. But uh, uh, there are four new markets that we're talking to right now, so I can't say any more than that. So we're looking at ten events next year. Uh, it'll definitely be uh, nine. We're working on ten. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Question for Peter Sabota. Better, your opponent came from a uh, great gym with great jiu-jitsu and elbows from every angle. Were you aware? Were, were you aware of this when you took him to the ground? Um, yeah, I knew that uh, he has six wins by TKO with elbows, but um, he scored it from the top. So I knew when I take him down and put him on his back, elbows from from the back are not. Uh, very dangerous in my opinion. I tried to pass the guard but uh, he had a really good guard and I was um, I was a little bit surprised because of that because I thought it would be a little bit easier but um, he did pretty good on the ground so I, I keep it uh, kept it also standing. It was a great fight and I enjoyed it. Thank you and one more for CB. Uh, CB would you I'm here. would you agree that besides winning the fights wrestling and wrestling can save as would you agree that besides uh, winning the fights, wrestling can save fighters' ass? Save your ass. A few times, because you were in danger a few times, so yeah, that's why. Oh yeah, wrestling's great to have, a, you know, and in your back pocket if the, the striking's not working out. Uh, Francis was hard for me to get to, you know, I landed that hook early, but yeah, I had to rely on my wrestling to uh, save my butt. <laughs> Yes. I don't want to cuss in front of everybody. <laughs> and last one for Mr. Gary Cook. Uh, did you have a chance, because I, I, I know for a fact that few Polish fighters outside of uh, UFC were, uh, came here for an event, did you have a chance to, to meet with them? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're always open to talking about fighters who want to join the UFC and they have to be good enough and yeah, we've had lots of conversations. I, I got to tell you, this week, uh, we, we, you know, we go around the world uh, this week has been an interesting week, and I think not only has it opened up the German market, but this, this, this was attractive to people from the Netherlands. We had 14 nations represented on the card. We had fans coming in from Czechoslovakia, from, from, uh, from Russia, from Poland. We've, we've had a lot of uh, different nations, in, and so it's, it's just all part of what we do. Uh, the next thing is, how do we get an event in Poland? And we're having that discussion, as you well know. Um, have you been in contact with any of the, of the people behind it? Wow, this, this, this is an amazing world, isn't it? I, I spoke to the uh, Helsinki Arena uh, an hour ago. I right, said, right. what's going on? What have you got in the fourth quarter to add another event? And there you go. He's told you. So, well done. All right. Um, but we don't know yet, so we just. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, have, have, have you been scouting fighters from Finland? Um, seeing is really, really growing up. No, I, I, uh, that's not something I get involved in. As you know, Sean Shelby and uh, and um, Joe Silva, that's what they do, and Dana and the guys. I, I've got a lot of other stuff to take care of, so I'll leave that to them. Right. Thank. Gary, uh, over here, point left. Uh, you just mentioned uh, that you're already in negotiations uh, with the Auto Arena guys uh, for a return you know, next year. I guess you said March, uh, no, May 23rd, right? Um, how far are those negotiations and how safe is Berlin as, uh, as, a, as a place for next year? I well, they're also <coughs> other German cities. Too. Yeah, sure. No, they're pretty good. I, I like capital cities, I have to be very honest. And I think that, that as an organization trying to, trying to build and trying to grow, it's always good to be coming back to the same place so people can prepare, they can take time. To be prepared, I think the uh, the issue in May this year was we had a German Cup final, we had a May, we had a Champions League final, the German team went off to the World Cup, we had a May Day, we had another bank holiday, we had a holiday this weekend. I mean, it's it's, it's not an easy market in May, uh, but uh, next year there's a there's a gap that's appeared. It'll be uh, after the German Cup final, so uh, we're working with the guys here who have been brilliant. The O2 Arena. Uh, here, these guys are fabulous, and uh, they want us back. And whenever people want you, and the fans react to it, then you come back. Gary, um, Dana mentioned the possibility of an Irish terrestrial TV deal uh, with an Irish national broadcaster. Can you shed any more light on that? Uh, I've got a very, very strong suspicion that the Dublin fight will be on a terrestrial TV network. 
Do you so name which one? No, I can't. But there's, you, it's pretty limited. <laughs> <laughs> CG <So>. car or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just another one for uh, Gagger and CB. Um, any possibility you guys might like to, to meet each other in the octagon? <laughs> I don't know, that's up to the matchmakers, of course we both won, so it's a possibility, but um, for me it doesn't make any difference. kind of feel the same way, you know, it's up to the matchmakers, but, you know, I'm, I'm more looking to uh, try to headline the Arizona card, that would be my dream, um, December 13th, I don't know if you want to come to Arizona, but... <laughs> I've been uh, fighting out of the country for my, uh, you know, last three out of four. So I'd like to fight in my own backyard, and you know, whoever wants to come to Arizona and, and fight me, I'd like that. That's... Another question for Gigard. Um, you're very popular in Japan. You were a dream champion. The UFC is going to return there in September this year. Uh, even though it's not sure who your opponent will be, is you, are you perhaps interested in fighting in Japan? Yeah, I would uh, definitely love to fight in Japan. I think uh, the Japanese crowd is well educated and uh, always. Uh, I just like Japan, so if I would able to fight, I would I would love that. But uh, I they already have the headline, so call me any event would be great for me. I do, but I would love to fight in Japan, yeah, for sure. And a question for Sean. Over here. Uh, it was a split decision, a pretty close fight. Were you nervous when you were awaiting the decision? You know, man, usually when you go to a different country, like the golden rule is you never want to go to a decision. So, I mean, when I heard the split decision, I was like, I, I just lost this fight. But, I mean, I felt, <clears throat> I felt I landed a lot more shots than he did. I mean, I kind of, I was kind of on my bike, you know, backpedaling a little bit, but, and, and just going out of the country, everything, I mean, no excuses. I probably should have been a little bit more aggressive and got in his face, but. It is what it is, you know. And my next fight should be a lot better, but yeah, no, I was definitely nervous. I was nervous. Thank you. Yeah. Another one for Gary. I got one left. Uh, you just mentioned four TV networks being in attendance tonight. Um, can you name them? No, that'd be unfair to them because we're still we're talking to each one of them. There's only space for two of them, so we have to keep that uh, under wraps. But I think the the, the key to that is it, that we've got four. Uh, six months ago, nine months ago, there wasn't anybody. So congratulations to every fighter, congratulations to the fans, and more importantly, congratulations to you, the German media, for making it happen. Uh, this one's for Gega, right here. Chris <laughs> Dillon. And I'm going to switch back in English. Um, not when, but, uh, I mean, not if, but when there's going to be an ultimate fighter in the Netherlands, which would be, like to be a coach. Yeah, definitely. I think um, uh, UFC, w if they would have an event in Holland, it would be great. It would sell out, I think. <laughs> and we have some good uh, Dutch fighters, so I hope so. And a follow-up question on that. And you just said you would like to fight in Japan. If you should choose Japan or Amsterdam, what will you choose? Definitely Japan, because um, the people of Japan are very respectful and... Uh, they really know the sport, so I always enjoyed fighting in Japan, so, yeah. But Harlem would be good too, yeah. Uh, the Swedish event is, I think, it's well publicized. Dana's been very open this week, uh, talking about, obviously, the, the talk is about uh, Gustafsson. Uh, that's, you know, that's going on in the background. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a crowd in Sweden that want to see a great, you know, a great event. We want to keep that on the card. I, I don't think... Personally, I don't think the fact that they'd be close together would be a problem. But again, there's so many moving parts to this. Everybody thinks it's just a case of like taking a piece of paper and mapping out where you want to go. Uh, there's so many moving parts: the arena, the dates available, getting a great card, putting the, getting a great TV network, getting the media behind it. It's, it's, it's an awful lot of work. But the good news is, uh, like I said earlier, 12 months ago, 18 months ago. Uh, people were scared of having a UFC event in uh, in their city, and now we've got cities, including city uh, officials, calling us and asking us to bring the um, the UFC fans to our uh, to their city. So I'm not scared of doing those two events in the same quarter. Thanks. One more. Dana mentioned um, a European title fight possibly with the end of the year. Uh, where would you like to see um, a title fight? 
uh, in Europe. Yes. Um, I, I, anywhere, because I've always said it, and I've been quite public about it, one of the great things, and no disrespect to the Americans uh, at the top table or any other nation represented, <coughs> Venezuelans included, uh, my goal is to have uh, a European carrying their flag fighting for a world title. I don't care whether it's in Stockholm, whether it's in Berlin, wherever it might be, and uh, I, I, that's that's one of the goals for us. You know that we we've got to have uh, world title so that the world watches Europe host a world title fight. Do you, do you think it'll happen by the end of the year yourself? Um, it's a that's a difficult one. You know, again, Dana and the guys are working on a whole bunch of different things. I, you just never know. You just never know. But the great thing is, again, D Dana gives us a lot of confidence because he, he comes over and he flies over and, you know, he could equally have gone into Brazil tonight. Uh, you know, Lorenzo's uh, still in Vegas and, and they have gr the greatest confidence. But it's not just in, in us and our team, UFC. It's the way that the media are reacting, the way that this the story is building. And it's the fighters, when they come to Europe, they put on great shows and, and that's all helping build. So uh, we're always going to be looking to have title fights, big cities, it's just going to get bigger and better. That's it. Can I just close, if I may, just for one second, just to say thank you very much to you, the media. Uh, I know for some of you who travel many miles, travel very safely, enjoy your family when you get back. I'm going to have one call out. Uh, we've worked very hard in Germany, thanks to the German public, but I want to call out Gegard Mousasi and Mark Munoz. I have the greatest respect for them. We call on them. They are athletes. That's their job. We've asked them also to be PR executives for our brand and our business, and I have the greatest respect for every bit of work that we put them through, and I cannot thank them enough. They represent our business, and they represent every fighter, uh, with, uh, with, and I admire that greatly. So thank you very much to them. We'll see you all hopefully in Vegas for the International Week, all of those of you covering European uh, events, and obviously can't wait to see you in Dublin. Thank you, and travel safe. There is no competition. We are the best, yeah. There is no competition.